Hello and welcome to Inside Indiana Business. I'm Gary Dick. The COVID-19 pandemic has forced a really unprecedented volatility in economic activity, skyrocketing unemployment, business failures, and a lot of uncertainty about the future. While there is great variation in opinion uh, regarding the potential depth and duration of the downturn, many suggest 2020 uh, could go down as the worst year for economic growth since the Great Depression. Now for perspective uh, and what we might expect here in Indiana in the second half of the year, pleased to be joined, as always, by the director of Ball State Center for Business and Economic Research, Mike Hicks. And uh, Mike, as always, welcome to the program. Good to be with you. Uh, fairly uh, gloomy introduction there, uh, but as we get into this, you, you and uh, your group at Ball State recently released a report uh, really zeroing in on the economic impact to state and local government uh, here in Indiana from the pandemic. And uh, again, hard to, to overstate uh, the, uh, the devastation that may be wrought from uh, the pandemic. Right, well, second quarter of this year is the worst quarter of GDP loss in recorded history dating back to the 1920s. The unemployment rate, um, depending on how it's measured nationally, we've lost you know one out of every five workers from January. Uh, we're a little bit better off in Indiana. I think if we could properly measure it, the unemployment rate here would be just under 15 percent. Wow. So these are great depression levels of, of uh, job losses and loss of economic activity. And so as we think about what that does to state and local taxes at the state level, you know, loss of tax dollars somewhere between 2.1 and 2.4 billion dollars over the next couple of years. That doesn't include extra expenditures to test and to take care of other things that are COVID related, just revenue losses. And for local governments, the impact is you know, somewhat smaller uh, overall, but there are, you know, 20 to 30 counties that are facing perhaps double digit revenue losses, some extraordinarily high through 2022 and even into 2023. Uh, Mike, as you look around the state of Indiana at, at particular uh, municipalities uh, or communities, are some more susceptible or face a greater impact than others? Yeah, yes. Um, so, and it stands to reason if you have a casino or um, a casino-like activity in your county, that's a huge revenue source. So those counties that host casinos are losing a significant share of revenue, as much as 40, 50 percent. Uh, a lot of that's shared with other communities and other activities, but that's a big revenue shock. If you have a heavy reliance on local income taxes, which are more volatile than property taxes, or if you have a lot of food and beverage taxes like Marion County, that's going to make your impact of this COVID much more significant. And then finally, if you have an economy that's dominated by those high-risk service sectors, the, the casinos, of course, but accommodations, retail, restaurants, those sectors, the counties and municipal governments with those in their community are at extraordinary risk over the next couple of years. Yeah, I guess a silver lining, if you will, is the economic health of the state heading into the pandemic, the rainy day fund and, and where Indiana was at that point. Does that soften the blow a bit and how, do, how does that factor in? Absolutely. Now, 2019 was a, a, a tough year uh, by end, year's end for the state economy, but we, we ended with a $2.1 billion rainy day fund. The governor pulled back some of the expenditures from the last session. Uh, so we, we, we entered this pandemic with about $2.4 billion in a rainy day fund. And with the CARES Act, which gave a sim similar amount to the state government in order to take care of expenditures related to COVID, we'll probably get through the most likely scenario uh, without the sort of dramatic reduction in services. A couple challenges here are we don't know what extra costs for schooling might be. I mean, I've heard estimates of one million or more dollars per school to equip them for COVID. That doesn't include, you know, broadband and technology to do online education. So that the the state of our fiscal health going into this COVID is going to make us a lot better off than states that had no rainy day fund or, or had big unfunded liabilities yeah. on the revenue. Side. Only have about 30 seconds left, Mike, but want to get your take on the second half of 2020, the outlook for Indiana, heavy manufacturing state. Uh, obviously, uh, what do you see in the second half of the year? So we're going to recover some from the big shock from second quarter. You know, GDP lost 15 to 20 percent. 
a big shock in jobs, you know, almost 20 percent, uh, at least had some temporary layoffs. Uh, but we're not going to get back to where we were for a couple of years. I think GDP will end uh, 2020 about five and a half to six percent beneath where we were in 2019. That would make this the worst year for GDP and unemployment since 1937. Wow. Yeah. All right. Not a lot of great news there, Mike, but great perspective, uh, as always. Really appreciate it. Mike Hicks from Ball State University. Thank you.